Hello friends, uh, my name is Dr. Uday Lal. I'm a consultant physician practicing at Manshare Clinic at road number 3 at Banjara Hills and I'm also the chief physician at Deccan Hospital Samajigura. Today uh, I'm going to talk to you about, highlight a few things on dengue fever. Dengue fever has been in the news for the last couple of months as everyone knows now and uh, this is more seen during the monsoon period. We all look forward to a good monsoon but with the monsoon comes the perils of dengue fever. Now what is dengue fever? Dengue fever is basically an arbovirus which is transmitted through a bite of a mosquito or a tick. And uh, the irony is that the mosquitoes tend to bite during the daytime or early evening uh, with an incubation period of roughly four to seven days. So what are the symptoms one encounters with dengue fever? We see that uh, in dengue fever, there are uh, people who present with high grade fever. They have uh, associated headaches, body pains, and an intense throbbing in the eyeballs, the frontal eyeballs. In addition, there can be uh, some amount of fluid uh, which uh, tends to collect in the abdomen and as well as the lungs, as what we call the cirrhosal effusions. So these are very common things. In addition, you can get a rash, itching and petechiae. Petechiae are small red spots which we see in, uh, on the skin while pressing them, they still do not disappear. Now, uh, in, uh, in dengue fever, younger children less than five years or and elderly people are more prone, so are pregnant women. So these, uh, these are subsets that are more prone to having complications of dengue fever. Now, what happens in dengue fever? We all uh, talk about it. There's basically a decrease in the platelet counts as well as a decrease in the fluid. You can you can uh, correlate it to like a, a, a pipe which has small tiny holes in it and water is flowing through it. Obviously, when there are holes in a small pipe, you will see uh, amount of water that leak out from that. So similarly in dengue fever, there is a leakage of both the platelets as well as what we call the fluid, the plasma. And this leads to complications if it's not treated early. Now in severe dengue fever, you can have bleeding manifestations like bleeding from the nose, you can have bleeding from the gums, you can have uh, what we call bleeding in the stools, what we call melina. These are very common symptoms that we have and you can also have bleeding in the urine, what we call as hematuria. So if there is severe dengue fever, this can lead to uh, multi-organ dysfunction and what we call as hemorrhagic, dengue hemorrhagic shock which can be life-threatening. So we need to take these things into consideration uh, when we are talking about dengue fever. These are symptoms, warning signs that we need to keep in mind. Now, what are the prevention? Always, we always talk about prevention is better than cure. So we should always try to use good mosquito repellents. DET, DEET is probably the best out of this. You avoid stagnant water. This is one of the major problems which uh, are responsible for the epidemic of dengue. So any stagnant water, whether it is even in uh, small plates where you put under your uh, flower uh, pots, you should see that the water is not uh, there or in, in water coolers, etc. You can use insecticides and in, uh, to to take care of the lava that can the that can be destroyed. Use a uh, full sleeve clothing so that you cover the maximum area of the skin and use mosquito netting uh, that's very important that will also help in prevention of uh, dengue and uh, if anybody has suffered from dengue fever please do not donate any blood for at least six months that's something that i would definitely like to highlight and uh, so friends if you if any of your dear and near ones are suffering from any of these symptoms please make sure that you see a doctor at the earliest Thank you.